So my name is Eddie. I'm, part, I'm from Grow Wellness Group. And today we're going to be talking about how to build mental toughness and resilience. So I'll share, I give a lovely background, but just kind of recap. So I work, I'm a sports performance, sports performance consultant at Grow Wellness Group, Girl Sports Psychology. Uh, I got my master's degree in Minnesota State, Mankato, Minnesota, there for two years. I was supervised under great professors, people that work with Olympic athletes, so I got a lot of great education there. Uh, background, I played soccer at DePaul University for four years, and so I currently play with the USA Deaf National Team. Uh, we competed in the 2019 Deaf Pan American Games, uh, 2022 Deaf Olympics, 2022, 2023 Deaf World Cup in Malaysia, and this fall we're going to compete in the 2024 Pan Am Games in Brazil. So, got some competition up coming up, so that's, that's a little bit about myself. And how I got into sports psychology in general is I've always just had a passion for helping athletes uh, kind of become the best version of themselves. First, personally, for me, growing up, I never really had anyone to talk to, so I want to be that person for someone that they can go talk to. Especially being an athlete with hearing loss, I never had anyone on my team or my community that really had hearing loss, so I kind of felt like an outsider. So, I want to provide that person, be that space for someone, especially athletes with disabilities. So a little bit about growth sports psychology. So our mission is to empower athletes across the globe to kind of develop their passion to improve their mental well-being, confidence, reach their potential, and pursue excellence on and off the field. And we're really focused on the holistic person. Yes, we're an athlete, but we're also a person. How many times do we see professional athletes get criticized, um, critiqued all the time, but at the end of the day, we're only human, right? All human. So that's why we, want, we actually strive to have the holistic approach. And what we do at Girls for Psychology, we work with individual athletes, but we also work with teams around the local area and around, throughout Chicago. So, a little activity. I want everyone to put your hands in the air. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to keep your hands in the air if you think this is the right answer, okay? Keep it up. So, keep your hand in the air if you think your sport or sports in general is 10% mental. Keep your hands in the air if you think it's 20% mental. Keep your hands in the air if you think the game is 40% mental. 50% mental. 60. 70. 80. 90. 100. Awesome. Right? So, this kind of broad, when we start to see a drop off between 50 and 90 to 100. So, research shows that about sports and just uh, your game, whatever sport it is, it's about 40 to 90% mental. But if you depend on the sport, right? An individual sport might be a little bit more higher up on the mental game, like swimming, uh, golf, track and field, dancing, different sports. But also, we might have team sports, maybe it's less mental, but it's more of a team, but all we're still involved in the mental game. My soccer coach always kind of iterated with me that soccer is 90% mental, 10% physical. And that was kind of the message I had growing up. And when we get older, physicality, we start to kind of even out. But the people with the extra mental game, the extra that give the edge, that kind of thrive, and they kind of where everyone else kind of bounced out. Yes, yeah, there's people that have exceptional physical abilities that kind of get there, but it's the mental game that pushes them to the next level. Yeah, so oftentimes when we hear mental toughness, and everyone's kind of think it's kind of like nitty gritty, tough. You have to be super tough. You can't show like any emotions. You have to be resilient the whole time. So a lot of times there's misconceptions of mental toughness. So one of the mental toughness is something either you have or do not have. So, actually, mental toughness is something we can develop. We can all develop mental toughness. Yes, some people maybe have developed it at a younger age, but there's always an opportunity to develop mental toughness. Mental toughness is not it's just about your mind. Mental toughness is about the mind and the body. It's all connected. Yes, we develop mental toughness through the mind, but also we need the body, breathing, recovery. You know, we use our body, right? So it's not just about the mind. Mental toughness can only be built by myself. We need support. We need our friends, we need our coaches, we need our families, we need maybe our teachers even, maybe we are personal trainers. We need to have a support. It, yes, we can build it by ourselves, but having that extra support can get us to that next level. You don't have to do it by yourself. Mentally tough people never fail but deal with stress. The top mentally tough people, they fail all the time, but what they do is they find ways to persevere and find strategies to kind of, and they learn from their failures, to overcome their failures. And they deal with stress, but they find coping skills to deal with that stress, whether it's breathing, whether it's relaxation, eating, getting enough sleep, they kind of deal with that stress. Mentally tough, toughness is about ignoring emotions. A lot of times we can be frustrated, we're going to be excited. And don't ignore those emotions, 
use them. Sometimes we can use that frustration and maybe we can use that to our advantage. Especially maybe in wrestling, sometimes you might be a little frustrated. Use that to take out your opponent, right? Don't ignore your emotions. I also tell people to not show weakness. We all have weaknesses. It's part of sport, it's part of life. So be, be, so be okay in showing your weakness. Mentally toughness says, if it isn't broke, no need to fix it. We all know Steph, Stephen Curry, he can probably shoot 95% from the line, right? It doesn't mean he's not working on his free throws every day. He's still working until he can get better. Nothing's ever perfect, he can always drive. His free throw shooting isn't broke, but he still wants to keep working on it and fix it, right? Lastly, mentally tough people cannot show, and build, show the vulnerability. The most mentally tough people embrace vulnerability, embrace their weakness, embrace, and that's how they kind of thrive. That's how we learn how to fail. That's how we learn how to overcome from our mistakes. That's we have to learn. We have to show vulnerability. It's scary. I know. It's very scary. But that's how we grow. That's how we become mentally tough. So, Champion's Mind he had a lovely quote about how he defines mental toughness. So, this guy named Jim Afro, lovely book. So, he defines mental toughness as the ability to remain positive and proactive in the most adverse of circumstances. Mental toughness is built on doing a thing that is hard over and over again, especially when we don't feel like doing it. Mental toughness allows us to push through our, on our down days when we're not feeling our best. Distraction, discomfort, and difficulties are no match for the champion. You guys are all champions. Mental toughness is a way to get to becoming a champion. So, there's some famous quotes. We all know this guy? Familiar? Retired? Maybe he wants to be a sports analyst now? Tom Brady. He goes, to me, football is so much more about mental toughness. It's digging deep. Oh, it's so much more about mental toughness. It's digging deep. It's doing whatever you need to do to t help your team win. And that comes in all shapes and forms. Mia Hamm, soccer legend, maybe a pioneer for women's soccer, part of the Golden Era, 1999 World Cup. The most important attribute a player must have is mental toughness. So two top athletes, two, they really talk, emphasize how the importance of mental toughness. So, mental toughness can be kind of broad. So, uh, Cloud and Crush, they came up with this research called the four C's of mental toughness. They are control, commitment, challenge, and confidence. And we're going to kind of dive into the four C's. First C, confidence. This is probably, for me, personally, one of the most important C's is confidence. Confidence means having belief in your abilities, ability to accomplish a task or goal. That belief is self-confidence in yourself. But how do we build self-confidence? Sometimes it's not always easy, right? Sometimes we don't know how to build self-confidence. So, one way we can build self-confidence, one way we can build confidence is through self-talk. What do we say to, what we say to ourselves matter? Has anyone made a mistake in sport or maybe in school and they say, man, I'm not very good. I don't want to shoot the ball anymore. I don't want to let my teammates down again, right? What we say to ourselves matter. We beat ourselves up and that impacts our performance. That impacts how we feel the next day. And self-talk leads to positive affirmation. Anyone know what positive affirmations are? Yeah? Like, I can do it. Yeah, perfect. Uh, believing in yourself. Yeah, so I can do it, believe in yourself. I am capable, I am resilient, I am tough, I'm a great athlete. I can do this, I will win this game, I will go all out today, right? Positive affirmation leads to that kind of self-talk, how we speak to ourselves matters. Be kind to oneself, be one's best friend. Mistake management. Who's made a mistake? Right? It happens. We're only human. So yeah, we've all made a mistake, right? It's part of life. We're human. It's how we're able to bounce back. How can we bounce back from that mistake? That kind of, with that self-talk, with those positive affirmations. Maybe it's a refocus cue. Mistake management. Imagery. Are we pitch, before a game, are we pitching ourselves being successful on the pitch? Or on the field? Or in the hockey rink? Or on the dance floor? Are we pitching ourselves being successful? Are we pitching ourselves being confident? Lastly, so, a lot of times it's helpful to write stuff down. So, remind yourself of your past accomplishments. Sometimes we can make, has anyone made a resume before? Done a resume? Right? Okay, let's do a resume. Let's do a confidence resume. Write down a list of past accomplishments. What skills you have. What makes you a unique athlete, right? Confidence resume is a great way to build confidence. Confidence journal. So maybe we have, a, we write down in a journal, right? And something, this is what we call the three to one ratio. So we write down something, three positives to one thing that we want to work on. So it's a tool, so after every practice, game, when we're feeling down, we, we can go back to this and be like, okay, I did three things positive and one thing negative. Because naturally, we can have the best game, but if we make one mistake, our mind goes to that one mistake, right? We think we could have done that better. 
when instead we did so many other things right, right? So that's where the three to one ratio comes in. This is a lovely quote from a Paralympic participant. So belief in oneself is incredibly infectious and generates momentum, the collective force of for which outweighs any kernel of self-doubt that may creep in. The second one is control. How often in sports or in life do we think about the things or focus on the things that we cannot control? Often, right? But how often do we let those uncontrollables impact our performance? How many of you guys let the referee, how, every, how everyone, have you guys let the referee um, impact your performance? Yeah? You kind of start with the referee and you kind of just so focused on that call, it was such a bad call, it takes you away from your performance and now you're like, oh man, I've lost my momentum, I've lost my confidence, right? So that's real, those uncontrollables have a huge impact. So, what are the things we can control though? How can we remind ourselves to stay focused and in control? One of them is focus cues. So when athletes make mistakes or they try to focus on, you know, maybe the referee, how do we reset? Sometimes if, if lacrosse, we look at the lacrosse stick, right? Okay, we can reset. Soccer, maybe look at our shoes. Football, we look at our tape, grip band, focus cues. Building self-awareness, recognize when we are getting upset, when we're losing, we're kind of teetering into that yellow red zone where we're distracted by the referees, we're distracted by the crowd, we're distracted by the other team. This guy might be chirping us, right? Let's, let's try to figure out, build that self-awareness when that's happening, right? I love acronyms, so this one is called WIN. What's important now? This is gonna help us get back into the present moment when we kind of get distracted. Controlling the controllables. If you take anything away, we always control the controllables, focus on that. And lastly, we have a thing called A. It's an acronym called, we can control our attitude, preparation, and effort. Those are the three things we can control, we can really focus on. Attitude, preparation, and effort. Michael Phelps, I don't know, maybe, maybe the most decorated Olympian maybe, probably, I don't know, there's, there's some people catching up. But, he goes, I can only control my performance if I do my best and I can feel good at the end of the day. Michael Phelps. Second, third one, commitment. Goal setting, a way we can be committed is through goal setting. We have performance goal, we have process goal, performance goals, outcome goals. Outcome goals are like that dream goal. When you wake up, you're like, I want to be an Olympian today. That's my dream goal. Or I want to be a state champion today. Or I want to get 30 points today. That's our dream goal, right? Performance goal, it's kind of our monthly goal. The one that we kind of achieve, or maybe from, from week to week, right? Maybe at this game, I want to have a performance of where I have 20 points. Or I have a perfect routine in gymnastics, right? Process goals are like our day-to-day -day goals, the ones that we control every day. The ones that are within our control, those are the process goals. And maybe I want to get extra 10 more free throws today. I want to get extra shots in hockey, right? Process goals. Commitment, a lot of times when we lose commitment, it's through motivation, but sometimes we lose motivation. When we kind of lose that motivation, we sometimes we need to look back and go to our why. Why do we love our sport? What made us interested in our sport? What, what kind of, what's my new mindset of this sport, right? Find your why. And then values, what do you value about your support? What do you value about yourself? What are your values, your beliefs? Another one, commitment, overcoming failures, seeing failures as learning lessons. So Michael Jordan, Chicago legend for everybody here. Yeah, <laughs> Chicago legend. If you're, lying, if you're trying to achieve, there will be roadblocks, right? I've had them, everyone's had them, but obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around, figure out don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it, right? Whether we're trying to set goals, whether we're playing a game, right, there's going to be obstacles in the way. It's easy to give up, it's hard to get around it. And you go, back, go, go around it, work through it, right? That's part of a commitment, staying committed to that task. The last one is challenge. Challenge yourself to be vulnerable and take risks. Taking risks is scary, right? Yeah, being vulnerable is scary. That's how we grow, it's how we learn, it's how we become better athletes, better human beings, and we can see growth in ourselves. I mean, maybe if we don't take that rest, how do we know what we're, what we're capable of, right? Challenge that fear of making mistakes or playing against the top team. I'll say it later, but who's heard, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best, right? Yeah? I have so much mindset here. <coughs> Challenge is opportunity to learn and grow. Kind of similar to the first thing, we have opportunity to learn and grow and learn about ourselves. Drive to be the best we can be. If we don't put that work in every day, we don't drive, we don't challenge ourselves, how do we know where we can be? Our potential could be up here, but if we don't challenge ourselves, we may never reach it, right? If you want to be the best again, oh, we have to say that you've got to beat the best. And here's the quote that I like to resonate with. Successful people have fear, successful people have doubts. 
So some people have worries, they just don't let these feelings stop them. They push through them. They don't let them stop them. So, now on to resilience. Before we talk, I want to, before I dive right into resilience, I want to clarify that there is a difference between mental toughness and resilience. They do kind of go hand in hand, but there is a distinct difference, just to kind of help you help everyone out. So mental toughness is about performing well in the face of stress and adversity. Resilience is about overcoming adversity and emerging stronger as a result. So mental toughness is like in the moment, and resilience I mean, is more like the aftermath. So mental toughness relates to preparation for a difficult event, and if something which happened before the event, and resilience relates to what you do to reduce the burden of stressful after the event happens, right? And so where mental toughness is more on the internal focus, the thoughts, emotions, feelings, where Resilience is focused on the external forces. Focus, recovering from an event and changing in response to the circumstances. So how do we build resilience? One, we develop or using a support system. Who is in your circle? Sometimes there's three circles. We have the outer, the middle, and the inner. Who is in that inner circle? Who's gonna support you? Who's gonna be there for you when things are bad, when things are good? Who's gonna support you? Who is in that circle developing a support system? Own your mistakes. After a game, after a huge maybe loss or a huge win, even a win, own those mistakes. It's hard to own it. It's hard to be accountable sometimes. Sometimes we look for excuses. We look for the easy way out. We blame our teammate. We blame our coaches. Sometimes we've got to own our mistakes. We own our mistakes and we learn from our mistakes. That's how we build resilience. After overcoming adversity, we've got to learn from those mistakes, learn what happened, learn how we can bounce back the next, next time. Managing stress and energy levels. So maybe when things are after an event, maybe we're intense, we need to learn how to relax, we need to breathe, meditation, take care of ourselves, whether that's taking a walk, taking a cold shower, warm shower, eating, recovering, managing stress levels, routine, preparation, right? Managing expectations. Who has high expectations for themselves? Right? We set the bar high. So maybe instead of expectations we have, let's focus on objectives that we want to accomplish. With expectations, we're so focused on the outcome that when we don't get there, we get really disappointed, right? So maybe if we focus on the small, tangible goals, then we can reach the expectation, right? But if we set really high, it's kind of hard to manage it, and then we kind of get demotivated, or we kind of don't want to do that anymore, right? Choose your response. I'll say this. You can always have the option to choose. Choose your response. Most people, most resilient people, they choose their response and learn from their mistakes and how they're going to bounce back. Choose your response, how you want to bounce back. You can either be frantic and really worried, or you can be calm and really think about the solution to the problem, right? Maintain perspective. So most resilient people maintain perspective. They don't take things out of proportion. They, it may seem at the moment, an event may be seem overwhelming, but sometimes we don't want to take things out of proportion. Kind of recognize perspective, right? Lastly, be true to who you are, right? All right, so a way to help with resilience is the ABCD method. So, first one, A, activate an event. So, this event is the, the event you face that triggers unwanted responses. For example, I had a client that, soccer player, high stage game, he was chosen, he's a really good forward, he had to make a, he was supposed to be there for the kind of like PKs to go to the next round of playoffs. He missed the PK, missed the fourth PK, and the team did not make it to playoffs. That was a major event for him. So that was kind of an activated event. So any time now, so his belief after the event is, I'm not a good PK taker, I'm not a good scorer, I'm not a good soccer player, I can't do this. I'm gonna let my teammate have the ball, right? Take the, take the penalty kicks now, right? What are the consequences of this? Less playing time, not, feeling, not scoring goals anymore, maybe not enjoying the sport. That's what will happen with him. Dispute. So let's dispute those thoughts and, and beliefs. You know, are those those beliefs real? Are they realistic? Are they actually true? You know, let's dispute them. So with the soccer player, we worked on how do we can we dispute that? Are you actually a bad soccer player? Are you actually a bad goal scorer? Are these are you just saying these things because of one event? One mistake does not define who you are. One mistake does not define your experience as soccer. Player does not define you. Lastly. E, exchange. So this is where we exchange those thoughts. This is where we use those positive affirmations, those self-talk we talked about way at the beginning. So we exchange the belief and thoughts. So one of the, for example, with him, we exchanged it where he said, he said, I'm going to be the one that takes the next PK. I will score the next goal. 
I will do this. Yeah, so Simone Biles, well, again, like Michael Phelps, one of the greatest Olympians of all time. So it was, in, I think, 2020 Olympics. And so she was experienced. She did one of her practice runs. And this was actually during COVID, so they had, like, no fans or people there. So it was a different practice environment for her. And when she was doing her routine, usually she does two flips and then does it. But when she went her practice routine, she only did one. And that's where she lost confidence and she developed something called the twisties. And you want to know what the twisties are? Yeah? You want to share? It's when a gymnast uh, can no longer remain oriented when they're in midair and continue to spot the ground. Right? Yeah. So when they lose their focus in the air and they have no idea where they are, they might think the ceiling is the ground, the ground is the ceiling. And that could lead to really serious injuries, even worse, right? And she developed that. And one of the things, the consequences of that, her belief, like, I can't do this, I'm going to get hurt, right? And that was a huge event for her, and the consequence, she had to sit out and watch her teammates win gold. Luckily, USA, she was able to, her teammates were able to help support her, but in that moment, she developed the twist. twist. And it's similar to the yips in golf, stuff like that. But what's really cool about Simone Biles is she was able to bounce back a couple of weeks later by practicing the patience again, by getting back on the mat, breathing, visualizing what it looks like to practice that. She had to work hard to get back on the mat, and she's still competing, right? So it's a cool story with Simone Biles. She overcame a huge adverse situation, and now it's still kind of, <laughs> And she really is a huge advocate for mental health and athletes. Uh, so Christian Erickson, for you guys don't know, in the 2020 Euros, or 2021, he actually, during the game, he played for Denmark, he collapsed. He went through cardiac arrest, and he had to be revived on the field by his teammates. Um, and it was a huge moment, and just not just sports, but in the whole world, everybody was watching, he collapsed on the field. And People thought he wasn't going to play again, he shouldn't play again, it's hard. But Christian Eric just worked through that. He actually started training like a couple weeks later with the team. He got ICD, which is, yeah, ICD for his heart, which helps prevent cardiac arrest in the future. And one of the things though, he was supposed to play in Italy. He was an inter Milan. And they said they wouldn't let him play in Italy because you can't wear an ICD while playing soccer. So, in Italy, so he had to find a whole other club. And so a year later, he found a club in Brentford, English is in London, played for Brentford for a season, and then actually that following fall, in 2020, he played in the World Cup. So he went from collapsing on the field in 2020 to playing in the World Cup after people said, you shouldn't play again, your heart's not, you're not safe to play soccer. He was really resilient in this moment. And now he plays for Man United. Yeah, they're doing all right, but he's probably one of the main players, one of the main stars, but it's really cool to see what happened to him. Not what happened to him, how he's able to a big adversity, right? So Simone Biles had like more psychological resilience, right? Where she had to overcome psychological response. Christian Anderson is more of a physical response. And that just shows that resilience shows up in different ways. Who, whatever adversity we're facing is different for every person. And resilience is different for everybody, right? It could be anything. So these are just two big examples that everyone has different kinds of resilience. All right, so lastly, we're going to do a breathing exercise. So. I want everyone to close your eyes, relax, relax your arms, relax your legs, relax your forehead, all right, relax it all, relax your legs, relax your legs, relax your feet, relax your forehead, all right, close your eyes. In a moment, you'll take a slow, deep breath through your nose, fill in the lower part of your lungs, then the middle part, and finally, the upper part of your lungs. After holding your breath for a few seconds, you will exhale slowly, relaxing your abdomen and chest. Now breathe in for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds. Resume breathe normally. You can use deep breathing to calm yourself as needed. Now, take a moment to get a clear mental picture of the main thing you want to accomplish today. What do you see in this mental picture of what you want to accomplish? What sensations do you notice in your body? What do you feel in your muscles? What sound do you hear? What smells and taste do you notice? Make the mental picture as clear and vivid as you can. Okay. Now, let the mental picture fade and focus on your breathing again. Stand tall, or no, oh, don't stand tall. Breathe in for two, four seconds. Breathe out for four seconds. Now bring back the mental picture of the main thing you want to accomplish today. What do you see? What sensation do you notice in your body? <coughs> what do you feel in your muscles? What sounds do you hear? Use all the senses to fully experience this mental picture. Fill with the belief that you can make it happen today. Let the mental picture fade once again. 
Imagine a warm glow forming in your stomach, right in the core. This warm glow is full of energy and it's starting to spread throughout your body. As the energy spreads, shake out your arms. Feel the energy starting to surge from inside you. Feel the energy again. Shake out your arms. Keep that feeling of energy as you do. Bring back the mental picture of the main thing you want to accomplish today. One final time. Check your energy level. Use the warm glow of energy in your body or breathing to find the level of energy you need and get yourself ready to perform today. You have the level of energy you need, you know what you want to accomplish, you believe you can accomplish it, and you're ready to do it. And on the count of three, you'll clap your hands three times and go do it. One, two, three. Awesome. And that is it for today. All right, thank you guys for coming.